meeting of the Independent School District 535 School Board is called to order at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 16, 2024, in Room 137 of the Edison Building. The board acknowledges this site and all RPS sites are situated on the ancestral land of the Dakota people, and we honor the Dakota nations and the sacred land of all indigenous peoples. Present at this meeting are school board members, Superintendent Catherine Callanan voting ex officio member, and Assistant School Board Clerk, Ms. Lori Sam. Ms. Sam, would you please call the vote? Director Barlow. Here. Director Custer. Here. Director Garcia. Here. Director Clawson. Here. Director Martin. Here. Dunnington. Here. Director Wilson. Here. At this time, we offer the opportunity to take the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. communication via email, phone call, at our community engagement listening sessions, and here during comments to the board. The purpose of comments to the board is to give community members an opportunity to provide input directly to the school board about issues that fall within our authority. The board and superintendent do not respond directly to the speaker's comments during the meeting, but may follow up with the speaker if requested and appropriate. 
Persons who want to make comments to the board must fill out the online request to provide comments to the board for by 5 p.m. on the Monday before the school board meeting to sign up for a time slot. The form is available on the RPS website and on the Simly main page. A reminder that Policy 206 and Procedure 206A set the time, place, and manner procedures and restrictions on comments to the board. By participating in the public comment period, each speaker agrees to abide by this public comment procedure. Prohibited conduct during the school board meeting should, um, should a speaker or meeting attendee display any of the prohibited conduct, the school board chair will call the person out of order. If the speaker or attendee persists in the conduct, they will be required to leave the meeting. Failure to abide by these rules would forfeit the speaker's right to participate in comments to the board at future meetings. Speakers, when your name is called, please come to this table. If you have written materials to the board, please provide them to the assistant school board clerk prior to your remarks, and she will distribute them to board members. Choose a microphone to speak into and be seated. Please direct your remarks to the school board. You'll have three minutes to speak, and the timer will be displayed right in front of me. Please begin your remarks by stating your name. Our first speaker tonight is Bob Warner. Good evening, my name is Bob Wonder. My family and I have lived in Rochester for over 30 years, and I'm here to speak about the proposed policy about trans students. I have carefully reviewed the proposal, and as a devout Christian, I want to urge the Rochester Public School Board to vote yes on the policy as currently worded. Some people have suggested that the policy be amended with the requirement that teachers be mandatory reporters. That is to force every teacher to serve as the gender police. And upon the discovery of a suspected trans student to immediately out the student against their will to their parents. I want to speak today in strong opposition to such an amendment for three reasons. Now, number one, forcing teachers to out suspected trans students is a violation of the student's autonomy. I'm a member of the LGBTQ community. It is an intensely personal decision on when to share your sexual orientation or gender identity with your parents. To prepare myself, I spend a great deal of time gathering information and finding supportive people. I reflected on everything my parents had ever said about LGBTQ folks, and I carefully chose the date, the time, and the location of this discussion to increase the likelihood of a positive outcome. To require teachers to immediately out suspected trans students would be emotionally traumatic for the student and violate the student's autonomy. Number two, forcing teachers to out suspected trans students is a violation of the student's trust. If the students respond, if the teacher responds to a student's initiation of a personal discussion with, if you share any information about gender identity, I'm required to immediately tell your parents, it would prevent the student from seeking and receiving the very beneficial guidance from a trusted adult. Such a policy would also put teachers in a very difficult position, either betray the student's trust or risk losing their jobs. Number three, forcing teachers to out suspected trans students against their will would be a violation of the student's safety. I can only imagine being at school one day and suddenly your teacher calls your parents and divulges your sexual orientation and gender identity. That evening you arrive home and have to face the family turmoil the school created. In some families, this could lead to serious conflict and even homelessness, abuse, or suicidal ideation. In closing, it has always been the practice of Rochester public school teachers to encourage their students to discuss every personal issue or challenge with their parents. This practice is the ideal way to address this sensitive issue. I want to encourage the school board to vote yes on the policy as currently worded which upholds the values of autonomy, trust, and safety. I believe a yes vote tonight is what is best for Rochester's students, families, and community. Thank you. Our second speaker tonight is Anna Wilson.
Good evening. I am Reverend Anna Wilson. I am an ordained minister of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a parent of a former RPS student, and a community member. Tonight you vote on Procedure 413A, and I wholeheartedly support your affirmative vote. Every person deserves dignity, respect, and a harassment-free environment in which to flourish. Years ago, I lived in Fort Worth, Texas, where at any given time, between three and 5,000 youth were homeless because their trusted adults kicked them out due to their queerness. School was a safe place for them, and I encourage that RPS also be a safe place for students whose homes may not be safe. Though I completely believe in separation of church and state, you and others who listen to past speakers have been misguided with inaccurate and inappropriate interpretation of scripture. I'd like to take a moment to offer scholarly understanding that is congruent with culture, context, and accepted norms of biblical times. First, Sodom and Gomorrah is used by some as proof that God hates our LGBTQIA2 plus community. But in reality, this scripture, per Jesus, is about a lack of hospita hospitality, which is paramount to Abrahamic traditions. Secondly, many claim that being gender diverse is new, also inaccurate. Queerness has been around as long as humans, if not before. Christianity was birthed from the Jewish tradition, Jewish faith tradition, and in Judaism, there are at least eight different genders. These genders are Zachar, male, Nakiba, female, Androgynos, having both male and female characteristics, Tumtum, -tum, lacking sexual characteristics, and Eloi Hama, identified female at birth, but later naturally created characteristics of male. And Aloit Adam, identified female at birth, but later developed male characteristics through human intervention. Sarah Sama, identified male at birth, and later developed female characteristics. Sarah Adam, identified male at birth, and later developed female characteristics through human intervention. With documents dating back thousands of years, gender diversity is not new. What is new seems to be the hatred and contempt expressed toward our queer community. Per the great commandment given by Jesus, Christians are to love without exception. My hope is that Rochester Public School District will continue providing a safe environment for all students to flourish and where all belong. Please vote affirmatively for Procedure 413A. Thank you very much. Our third speaker this evening is Joseph Nix. Good evening. My name is Joseph Nix. I am a taxpayer who supports the public schools. I have read the entire draft policy of 413A and I support it. I feel it does a good job of balancing the rights and the legitimate concerns of students, parents, faculty, and staff. Furthermore, the policy is not written to grant privileges to one group of students to the exclusion of any other. For example, and this is just one example, it is not just transgender or gender expansive individuals who can request accommodations for more privacy with restrooms or locker room facilities. Any student can make such a request for more privacy and the school district will work to identify solutions and accommodations that meet their needs. There is no hidden agenda with this policy. It, it is an attempt to make our schools a safe and supportive learning environment for all students, and also to comply with legal requirements in both state and federal law. So I encourage uh, support of this policy. Thank you.
fourth speaker tonight is Gail Julius. Our fifth speaker tonight is Linda Bradley. My name is Linda Bradley. I've lived in or around Rochester my entire life. Um, I had two children who went through the Rochester public school system. And they went to Gage, Willow Creek, John Marshall, and also the ALC. I am a Christian and believe that we should treat our neighbors with respect, kindness, and dignity, the same as we would like to be treated. I am also a grandmother. Although my grandkids are not trans, there are trans kids in the Rochester schools who are somebody's grandkids. And they deserve to be safe, valued, and supported, like all children. When trans kids feel safe at school, they can focus on academics without worrying about their safety and dignity. We all encounter people who are different from us, sometimes even in ways we don't understand. However, all students deserve safety, respect, and kindness. Trans students should be allowed to use the bathroom of their choice according to their sexual identity. Being gay or transgender is not a mental health issue. In conclusion, I believe that every person deserves the freedom to express their individual identity without fear of retribution, shame, or ridicule by adults or by their classmates. I ask that all parents and the school board encourage your children to treat trans students the way you would like to be treated. Therefore, I would like to urge the school board to vote yes. Thank you. Our sixth speaker is Cheryl Winters. Good evening, board members, superintendent, and interested parties. I too am here to endorse an affirmative vote on supporting transgender and or gender expansive students little about me. me. I have a vested interest and a long-standing relationship with the Rochester Public Schools. My mother-in-law taught here for 30 years. My spouse went through the system, my children went through the system, my grandchild is now in the system, a family member teaches here, and I taught here as well. ISD 535 has always endeavored to put the well-being of the student first. I know that. This is one more policy that will help ensure all students are not only respected, but safe. I caution you to consider the motivations of those opposed to this policy. Indeed, there's an effort to rebrand the forced <clears throat> I'm sorry, outing of trans kids as parental rights. However, the national PTA encourages their state, local, and councils to review school policies and support revisions to those policies that specifically address the topics of sexual orientation and gender identification and expression. It's probably true that many of us in this room have sought the help of a counselor or a therapist at some time in our lives, and maybe the rest of us should. What if you knew that whatever you talked about while seeking this guidance would be reported to your boss? or to your spouse. This is the type of environment opponents of this policy want to create for transgender or gender expansive students. And where does it stop? Let's say Christina comes to school wearing a suit and tie and wants to be called Chris. Do we call the parents? Or John changes into a skirt and heels once he gets off the bus at school, then changes back into jeans and tennis shoes to go home. Do we call the parents? I think it's obvious the only legitimate way to support students is to make and keep our classrooms and relationships between students and trusted adults 
inclusive and safe. This policy helps make that happen. Please vote affirmative. Our seventh speaker is Ash Wurzbaum. members of the school board and our guest faculty and staff listen. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm a lifelong Rochester resident who volunteers at Friendship Place near Mayo, so I know a lot of the experiences of our underprivileged students. I have friends who graduated from or work in the RPS system, and I hope to make this wonderful school system thrive for as long as we can. A few matters of importance can be dealt with in three minutes. So I have written to you all, except for Superintendent Patel, to whom I can forward the email if necessary, and maybe you may if you wish as well. But in the email going into further detail, I will include some of these points today. Any ruling or governing body, whether the pharaohs of Egypt who put their people into serfdom, or the tyrant queen of Russia, all of them cannot rule on their own. They need some kind of stable structure whether it's satisfying the oligarchs under Putin and the various rulers of oblasts, or the pharaoh having a mythology of being the son of Osiris, I believe, and um, for having the annual flooding of the Nile and defeating enemies. There's always some kind of interaction with either the middle management or the people themselves, and that balance is what allows the group to stay in power. No matter what group there is, there is no exception to this in history. Look at the origins of the Magna Carta. The reason why I bring this up is that the issue tonight is actually, surprisingly to most of you, not about whether we want to support transgender students. 
It's not even about whether you agree with the anthropology um, that is implied by the measures at Procedure 413. You can completely agree with every single part of that and still vote no on today's measure. The reason why is that this is an actual policy with actual effects. There are going to be effects on the entire school board system of this because either real or imagined, it is promoting a certain vision of human nature, of what people are. And because of this, as it goes contrary to the customs of a very large portion of the Rochester residents, if it did not, there would be no controversy about this at all. Many of these residents will try to leave the school system in a time when there is unfortunate uh, trust issues after the miscommunications following the referendum last year, after uh, the fallout from the controversy surrounding the firing of an employee, and many <coughs> other things that are much more controversial than what I remember when I was in high school. This pressure is going to be too great. People are going to leave the district, and you guys won't have funds, and then our kids are going to underperform 10 years from now. I urge you to reconsider this and vote on it next year when there's more stability. Thank you.
and boys tennis. Uh, the male boys tennis team was the state runner up. Uh, Daniel Moonhead and Cable, uh, Caleb Kenham were the state doubles constellation champions. And uh, Tej uh, Bagra was the state champ uh, for Rochester male this year. And uh, he's only a sophomore. And I, I creeped on him a little bit, I Googled it. So his state, his state tournament, he only lost four games. He won 6161, 6160, and 6161. I might have the semis. And he only lost four games in the state tournament. And he's old, only a uh, sophomore, like I said, so full century and male. And, and, uh, I'm sorry, well, uh, Century and Jam will have to contend with him and the rest of the state coming in. So that's it for Mayo and Jam. Okay, I guess it comes over to me. Um, we actually have a few of our great student athletes here. Uh, I don't know if it's protocol or not. I'm familiar with the school board thing. Um, the kids want to come to the front so uh, people can kind of see these, these faces of our scholar athletes. to do is kind of get some crowd participation with this as we support these kids. I'm going to try this. Um, Y'all su support me here. I'm the new guy, so just roll with me on this one. Um, I'm going to do a little call and response um, as we start this out. So I'm going to say, can I get a recognition, y'all? And y'all say recognize, okay? Can I get a recognition, y'all? Recognize. Can I get a recognition, y'all? Recognize. All right, Rochester Public Schools, along with Century High School, is proud to recognize um, some of our scholars that have achieved highly for the spring um, athletic season. Um, for the Gore girls, our 400 meters, um, we have Sophia Comfair, who ran a time of 55.9 at the state meet. Um, our 4x200 meter team consisted of Megan Lund, Clara Gerhard, Kaya Berry, and Sophia Comfair. And their time was 1 minute 42 seconds and 0.23 seconds. Um, our 4x400 team, also completed, completed at the state meet, and that team was composed of Kaya Berry, Emma Anderson, Emily Bunce, and Sophia Comfair. Their time was three minutes, 58.85 seconds. And for our boys, we had Sean Waisaki, who completed, competed at the triple jump, and had, had a distance jump of 46 feet, 10 and 3 quarters inches. And, and also in the long jump, Sean, Sean also qualified and had a long jump of 23 feet, 10 inches. Um, we also had Josh Kai before compete in the 110 hurdles and had a time of 14.13 seconds. Uh, and then for our four by 200 team, it took seventh. And that team was consisted of Jake Wills, Sean Waisaki, Max Elliott, and John Shannon. Our 4x400 four team took fifth at state, and that team consisted of Sean Waisaki, Jake Wills, Wyatt Lundstrom, and Gavin Vogel. And Gavin also uh, competed at the Open 400 in the state meet. And I'm proud to say the uh, greatest thing about all, with all of these things is that both the girls and the boys both met the gold standard for academic all state as well. Uh, and then also we had our Last but certainly not, not least, our adaptive softball team placed third place in the state tournament. Would you mind sharing your names with us individually? I'm Sophia Well, we are really glad to see you in the summer, and we are so glad that you came to join us tonight. Congratulations on your accomplishments. Please share a congratulations with all the students. And you've raised the bar, David, for our recognition. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be seeing something a little bit more peppy in the future. So I'll thank you. You can challenge me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank, well, we're having a great summer. And I just also want to say the activities director job is a tireless one. And so, David, you're beginning it. Brian, you are now our dean. As Jeff is going to be going off in retirement. But really, these people work almost 24 7. So. Uh, we thank you, and we hope you're getting a little break this summer as well. 
I got the long one today. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. interesting <clears throat> the boat comes later yeah, that'll be on their live feed and we have pretty much all know how that's going to go so everybody have a good night catch you at the next meeting <laughs>